What do you do if you're in a stock that's risen sharply and you don't want to sell because you believe there's more upside, but at the same time you're worried about a potential sharp decline giving the parabolic move? In this video, our head of options trading will give you a smart strategy to protect your profits while still enjoying more upside. I'm Mike Bellafuri, and we're one of the top proprietary trading firms located in New York City since 2005 and proud to develop number seven and even eight figure per year traders. We hope you agree you found the right place to learn. Hi, I'm Seth Freiberg. I'm the head trader of SMB Capital's options trading desk here in Manhattan. And like lots of other NASDAQ stocks, Tesla has been on a tear lately, which creates a kind of quandary for some Tesla investors and traders. And that's because Tesla does have a history of following up on these massive rallies with sometimes devastating pullbacks. And that's because if you're a long term bull on Tesla, you don't want to sell your shares and pay capital gains tax if you feel that long term the stock will go much higher and you'll have paid those taxes prematurely. And in fact, this is the exact position that one of our desk traders finds himself in here at SMB. And so he recently asked me to suggest a hedge that would allow him to stay long Tesla, even with a pullback potentially in the near future, which would allow him to be able to negate any drawdown he'd experience if Tesla did in fact pull back and at the same time allow him to actually profit from that pullback, actually cashing in on that pullback, as opposed to having to sit there and painfully watch your account shrink while Tesla takes one of its inevitable bearish turns. The purpose of this video is to share with you what I suggested to this trader so that if you find yourself in a, in a similar situation, you might consider the same approach. Before we get into the options trading technique that we'll be teaching you in today's video, if you're absolutely brand new to options trading and you don't know much about how they work, We've put together a video for you to understand options basics. And if you click the video appearing on your screen right now, it will lay the groundwork for you to understand the option strategy that we'll be sharing with you in this video. Then when you're finished, you can come back and watch the rest of the video. Okay, so it's been a pretty wild ride for Tesla in the first half of 2024 with the stock opening the year at 250, selling off to as low as 138.80 in mid-April and then rallying back to 260 by July 15th. And that means that Tesla has rallied an incredible 90% off its 2024 lows and Tesla traders are getting a little nervous about a sell-off. And so just like we alluded to earlier, there's a technique for dealing with this issue, and that is through a modified version of an option strategy known as the bear put spread. So in order to illustrate how the strategy works, let's head back to a similar time in the past, specifically to December 20th of last year, 2023. And as you can see, Tesla had experienced quite a run up staging a 26% rally off the lows that it hit on the last day of October. And so again, investors and traders would have been sitting on some very large unrealized gains into that run-up. And the trader on our desk, who I'm referring to, had a cost basis for his original Tesla shares of about $110. So he bought them for about $55,000, which was his original investment. Okay, and so suppose on the morning of December 20th, a trader had gone ahead and pulled up an options chain that expired a few months later on February 16th. And he went ahead and bought five of those 250 puts right below where the stock opened that morning, and then went ahead and sold five puts right where the stock bounced and found support on October 31st, right at that 195 strike, 55 points below the puts we bought at the 250 strike. And then simultaneously, we went ahead and sold five of those 265 calls where the stock had met resistance and failed two months back in early October. And so if he were to do that, he would be entering into a modified version of the bear put spread, where instead of simply buying the higher put and selling the lower one, which is what a bear put spread is, he adds to the trade a short call position at 265 above where the market is trading, which acts as a way of financing the put side of the trade. Now, why do I say financing. Why did I say we just finance the put side of the transaction? Well, let me show exactly what I mean by that, because if we take a look at the cash flow analysis of what we've just executed, 
you can see that when you sold the five calls up at 265, you received the credit of 1605. But each of those call options relates to 100 shares of Tesla stock. And so you multiply that by 100. And we sold five of them. So you multiply that by five. So as you can see from the calculation, the total positive cash flow from those five calls was actually $8,025. And then the puts you bought down at 250 cost you $7,740 using that same kind of calculation. And finally, the five puts you sold down at 195 at support brought in 1080 So when you net it all down, you have experienced positive cash flow of $1,360. And the fact that you've experienced positive cash flow is important, as you're going to see later. And so what we've done is therefore bought a put spread where the long put was more expensive than the short put, which means that without selling the calls, you would have had negative cash flow. But instead, having sold the five calls simultaneously, the entire structure will result in positive cash flow because the calls ended up creating more positive cash flow than the net of the put side of the transaction, if you think about it. Okay, so let's now move forward to February 5th, the day right after Tesla released its fourth quarter 2024 earnings report. And as you can see from the end of 2023 to the day that the earnings were released, the stock had indeed been experiencing a pullback and adding insult to injury, the market ended up being really disappointed by the Q4 earnings report and the stock got down an additional 18 points, resulting in Tesla the next morning, which you know had started up at 250 when we first opened the trade. It now had plummeted to 184.26. And so at this point, it would be worth it to take stock of where the trade stands. And so let's check out the position option by option on that day. So first of all, with only 11 days to go before the options chain expires, you can see the 265 calls have shrunk to next to nothing down at three cents a piece because the market has lost almost all hope that the right to buy Tesla 265, which is what those calls are, when it's trading below 185, the market's given up hope that that's going to have any value at all in 11 days. But the put side is a completely different story because those 250 long puts, which were originally below where the market was trading when we first put the trade on, and even the 195 short puts are now both in the money, meaning that if the owners of those puts exercise those puts, they could sell their shares for way more than they're trading for in the market. And so naturally, the 250 put, which is about 66 points above where the stock's trading, is going to be hugely valuable, which they were trading at 66.15, even though we originally bought them for only about $15. And the 195 puts that were short, those are also now way up at 1295 because they're about 11 or 12 points above where the stock is trading at the open that day. And so those are way up from the 216 we sold them for when the trade first started as well. And so if we wanted to close the trade at this point, let's see where we'd be. And so when you close an options trade, you simply execute the exact opposite of your original transaction, meaning you buy back the options you sold and you sell the options you bought. And so let's see how that would have played out that day. And so starting out, recalling that we received cash at the beginning of the trade just for entering the trade in the amount of 1360, then we move on to buying back the calls, which only cost us $20, and then cashing in those 250 puts, which brought in more than $33,000. But of course, we've got to close the 195 puts that we were short, which cost us far more than we paid for them because those also had become very valuable, but we were short them. So that actually hurts us. But despite that, primarily because those 250 puts had blown up so much in value, we were able to close the whole trade for a final gain of $27,940. So putting it another way, we never actually laid out any cash at all for this hedge because of those short calls that we sold initially to finance the trade. And so while not having had any negative cash flow to get into the hedge, we were able to make a profit of over $27,000 on the hedge 
which almost completely negated the effect on our account of the drawdown that had happened to the Tesla shares we were long, which had lost just a little bit more than that in value during that sell-off. And that's a very comforting thing for a trader when he can be long a stock but set up a hedge that can close to eliminate his account drawdown while the shares are pulling back. Now, today, those 500 shares are worth 260 per share. And so let's compare the situation the trader would have experienced depending upon if he had executed this hedge or not. And so focusing on the no hedge scenario first. On December 20th, when we first put the hedge on, Remember, his cost basis was $110, but the stock opened that day at $256.41. So his unrealized profit that day was $73,205. But when the stock had sold off so heavily by February 5th, the drawdown of his profits was $35,865. And by July 15th, those were restored with the stock trading at $260, which means the profits were $75,000 on his 500 shares. But now, let's take a look at the trader who put the hedge on. And as you can see, while he started in the same place as the trader with no hedge, by February 5th, he was able to close the hedge for a profit of $27,940, which means that by the time July 15th rolled around, his trade profits for Tesla were over $100,000. And even when the Tesla shares were drawn down so much on February 5th, the hedged trader was only drawn down $7,925, a far more psychologically acceptable number for traders. Now, I'd like to make a few really important points here before we wrap up, because you can't just run out and do a trade like this, a hedge like this, without understanding all of the different outcomes. So let's examine those. So first of all, and very importantly, you might have heard that being short calls, what are called naked calls, is a very dangerous practice. And that's true because the loss on the upside is unlimited theoretically. However, you're not really naked call options in this case because remember you own 500 shares in this example. And so if the stock had closed above 265 on expiration, your 500 shares would be sold to the owner of the calls for 265 per share. So you have the collateral in the form of those shares to cover your obligation to deliver those shares. So your loss is not unlimited at all. Rather, your profit is limited on the Tesla shares by the strike price of your call. So you got to make sure that you're comfortable selling those shares at 265 before you enter the trade. And so remember, you're exposing yourself to selling those shares at your call strike price of the stock rallies instead of the sell-off that you were hedging against. Your short puts at 195 could also be assigned by the way, and you'd have to buy more Tesla shares at 195 if the stock closed below 195 on an expiration day. In fact, you could theoretically have been assigned 500 more shares of Tesla at 195 per share at any time after you sold the five puts at 195. But as long as you close the trade before it expires, there's only a small chance that that can happen. And it essentially can happen, by the way, if the shares don't trade below 195 during the course of the trade. And by the way, some traders would take that as a positive. After all, if you think that 195 is a bargain price for Tesla, and that sure is what the market thinks today, then you'd be happy to have that assignment if you think about it. And finally, and very importantly, one great thing about this trade is that at any price below 165, the minimum you can make on the trade is the original credit you received. Why? Because at any price at or below 165, the short calls are going to expire worthless. And even if the two puts expire worthless also, which could only happen, by the way, between 250 and 265, then you get to keep the original cash flow as a kind of a consolation prize. At any price below 250, you start making even more money as the 250 put starts getting more and more valuable until the price hits 195, at which point that activates the 195 short put and the profits stop increasing at that point. And so even if the sell-off doesn't really happen, you'll make some money on the trade, which is why people love constructing hedges like this. And so what I'd like you to take away from today's video is that hedging profits on a stock in which you've got large embedded unrealized gains can be done very effectively and attractively through option strategies if you understand the principles we taught you in today's video. Professional options traders understand these concepts and can design fantastic hedges 
where you win in so many different circumstances while protecting your account in a powerful way. Now, if you'd like to learn three more option strategies that our pro traders use, including the unique options trick that allows you to make money while you wait to buy stocks or ETFs at the price you want, and the options income strategy that allows you to make consistent money, whether the market goes up or down or sideways, and how to make money on a stock or index trade, even if you're wrong on the direction, then click the link that's appearing right now at the top right-hand corner of your screen. That will open up the free workshop registration page in a new window. So don't worry, you won't lose this video. Or you can register directly for free at optionsclass.com.